my, amen. Thank, thank my brothers. Amen. Our deacons looking out for the past. Amen. <laughs> you say, Pastor, we already got one in the, in the, in the container, wet, ready and open, waiting for you. All right. Amen. Bless his name. Amen. <laughs> amen. God bless you, brothers. Minister Man's going to come and give us uh, a word description, then we'll come back and we'll pray, and then we'll proceed into our And it reads, For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you can eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, Whoever eats this bread and drink this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, which will he guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat this bread and drink this cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. But if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we ju are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. Bless the reading of the word. Amen. Amen. So this, this is what the scripture says. We come now to, as the minister said, we come now to examine ourselves. All of us know what we need from the Lord. All of us know how we have walked with God over these last 30 days or so. We need to come to this table with a clear conscience. Whatever it is, whatever it, whatever it may be between you and God, or it may be some, some person that you, you know, fail to forgive, whatever, whatever the, the sin is, ask God to remove it. Ask God to give you clearance that you may receive the Lord's Supper. He gives us an all, he gives all of us a chance to examine ourselves. To see if we are worthy. Now, nothing makes us worthy outside of the blood of Jesus. Works can't do it. The only thing that makes us worthy is repenting of our sins. Confessing that we have fallen short. And seeking God's help. Amen. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed as we go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the perfect and penetrating name of Jesus the Christ, your Son and our Savior. Lord, it's again that you have allowed us to come, first of all, to your house of prayer. It's again that you have allowed us to draw near thee and worship. Now, Lord, as we come, we stand before you asking that you would forgive us our sins. We come realizing, oh God, that we've all said, thought, did things that are not pleasing in your sight. You know just as well as we do what we're wrestling with. 
And so we're asking that you would forgive us now, Father. Pray, God, that you would give us strength that when our faith is being tested, that we will not trust in our own steps, but that we'll learn how to put our trust in thee. Lord, I ask that you would bless Olivet, but at the same time, Lord, forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of our corporate sins. We may not know, but Lord, you know. Forgive us of our private sins, things that we only think that we know. Let us not forget that you know all things. So, Father, we love you and we thank you so much for providing us a sacrifice through Jesus Christ that enables us to draw near to you now. Lord, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And so we thank you for the blood that was shed on our behalf out on a hill called Calvary. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Thank you, sir, for your love and your mercy and your kindness. And then, Lord, as I stand before your people as your under shepherd, Lord, my feet are made of clay. And, Lord, I have temptations just as any other person. I pray, God, that you would strengthen and keep me in the midst of those things that are intended to draw me away from you. Lord, I need your help. I need your strength. I need your power. Lord, I pray that I may not be a stumbling block to any soul who are seeking salvation through your son. So help me, Lord, to walk worthy of the calling that you have called me to walk. Give this to you, Lord. I ask that you would bless the blood and the body of this, your darling son. Lord, we thank you for the promise that you have given us as your children, that we will, you will not drink from the fruit of the vine anew until the day that you drink it in your Father's kingdom. So one day, we will be at the welcoming table. One day, we will see Jesus himself being the one who will administer to us the Lord's Supper then we should truly know that we are with the Lord. Until that time comes, Lord, sustain us in your spirit and keep us in your loving care. We ask these and other blessings in the strong name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. amen. And amen.
So thank you so much for your attendance. For those who are online, pray that you had a chance to also administer the Lord's Supper to yourself. Amen. But again, we thank God for the privilege and the opportunity to be able to come to the house of the Lord and then worship him in spirit and in truth. You can have a seat. Uh, you can have a seat. Just have a few uh, housekeeping orders to render. As Sister Leslie uh, reiterated earlier, please keep in mind Sister Sharon Husbeck Holmes as well as Sister Lisa Aldrich, both who are recovering from uh, knee procedures. Amen. And I know they're at home right now resting, so keep them in your prayers. Also keep our sick and shut in in your prayers. Amen. If you have, if you have time, and I'm sure you do, some, most of us do, uh, contact them, send them a text, call them and just let them know that you're thinking about them. And one thing I've learned about when you're checking on the sick, you're calling them to encourage them and they end up encouraging you. So it works both ways. And so keep them in, in your, your mind. I also want to thank Sister Dr. Janice Todd for filling in to Sister Brenda Alexander who was away getting some rest on last week. Amen. Sister Johnson, I'm sorry. I'm looking at her. <laughs> uh, but Sister Johnson, yeah, who's getting rest from last week and Sister Jan, she stepped in and did everything uh, just as, you know, just as it would go. So we thank God for that. Matter of fact, Sister Jan made me get the lesson out a day earlier. Amen. <laughs> and so I... <laughs> So I thank God for her. I said, I may have to start doing this more often. I don't have to worry about too much on Wednesdays. But again, we thank God. Now remember, third Sunday, we will be traveling to the city of Italy. Uh, tickets are still available. There's still room on the bus. Uh, and also, we will have church here at Olivet. Uh, same time, 10-15. Uh, so those of you who are not uh, traveling with us, please don't stay at home. Come to worship. Amen. 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 But I also want to remind you that even though we're going uh, on a road trip, don't take the Lord's ties with you. Amen. Leave your financial contribution here before. All right. And the reason why I say that is because in the summer months, uh, sometimes our giving, you know, kind of slags a little bit because people are on vacation doing other things. And so we don't want to take the Lord's money on the road. You know, we just give your tithes or have you give online or physically. Just make sure you do that. Just because we're on the road does not relieve us of being obedient to the Lord. Amen? I want, I want uh, God's blessings to stay over your life. Uh, continue to do that. Amen? All right. I think that's all I have. Uh, so now let us stand. Bless this house. Bless this house. Bless. Next time you come, your family. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. All right. So let us let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, how we thank you again for allowing us to enter into your house of prayer, praise, and preaching. Thank you for these who have gathered in person. Then, Lord, bless those who are listening at home. We thank you so much, Lord, for reminding us that you did it for us. You did it for me, and it makes it personal, Lord, because all of us have our own personal experience with you. Lord, I thank you for your suffering servant. The thing about Isaiah is that 700 years prior to Jesus' coming, he mentions a suffering servant, the one who would render his life in order that others may come to you through him. And so we thank you so much, oh God, that, that you allowed this suffering servant to come. You did it on purpose, Lord. You did it on purpose, and we thank you, Lord, for including us to be a part of your plan. Now, Lord, as we come again, we thank you because we realize that all that Jesus suffered, he never said a mumbling word. The fact is, Isaiah never recognizes him as Jesus, but he recognizes him as a servant. And when you know who you are, you don't have to say anything. You just serve and be consistent in your service. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you right now for all that we have experienced on this day. We glorify you. We magnify you. We love you even now. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before thy glorious presence, with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and hence and forevermore. And all of God's people say, Say, neighbor, he did it for me.